Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Welcome to our Freedom Friday with Gems. I am Prophetess Monique Ray. I am the visionary and the founder of Gems for Christ Women's Ministry. I give honor to God for God is so awesome. He's so sovereign and there is none like him. I give honor to my pastor, Apostle Meredith Jordan, and I give honor to you, you and you, every gem, every sapphire, every ruby, every emerald. I give honor to every onyx, for we are all someone special in the eyesight of God. Oh my God. Jim, so two weeks ago, God um, had me to start our series on strongholds. Because when we talk about Freedom Friday, God put in my spirit that, yes, it's so good to have the the um theme, Freedom Friday with gems, but God desires for um us to be free just in general in every areas of our lives. And um, so God decided to have me to walk through strongholds and talk about and dissect different spirits that um, we encounter as human beings while we're down on this earth realm. And God said to me that we was not going to rush through it, but we was going to take our time and we was going to walk through this together. So thank you for to all that have reached out and you guys have no idea how much of a blessing you are to me because when you inbox me and you have questions and ideas and suggestions, it, it does my heart good um, because it just shows me that what God has given me, it's it's meeting who he needs for it to meet. No, it mean, doesn't mean that it will meet everyone. No, but it will meet those that God has assigned to the voice that he has placed inside of me. So before we get started, we're just going to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you, God, honoring you, God, for who you are. God, for you are so awesome. You are so sovereign. God, you're so loving, and there is absolutely none like you. So, Father, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins, God. And, God, I want to tell you thank you. I want to tell you I love you. I want to tell you I need you. I want to tell you, Father God, that I'm nothing without you. But, Father God, I understand that I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. So, Father God, let Monique decrease, God, and let your Holy Spirit that dwells within me increase, God. And, God, let the word, Father God, that you have for today, God, to go forth, God. God, let it impact, shift, and shape the lives of all those that come in contact with it. Father God, let your perfect will be done in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. My God, gems. So last week, not last week, I'm sorry, two weeks ago, God had me to talk about strongholds and he had me to talk about the spirit of heaviness. And last week, God had me to have it aired again because again, God had put in my spirit that we're going to walk through this. We're not going to run through it, but we're going to walk. We're going to crawl. We're going to take our time with this so that everyone can be free. So when we talked about two weeks ago about the spirit of heaviness. And we talked about what happens when a person is actually walking around with the spirit of heaviness and how it actually manifests. And one of the things that we had talked about was that the spirit to say, well, prophetess, what do you mean by the darkening of their content? continents, meaning their look, their their expressions, um, their mental composure, um, their moods, their emotions, and as well as their character. We also talked about how the spirit of heaviness, how it dims a person vision that God has given them and involves them of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. It also quenches their faith and faith meaning the complete trust and confidence in God or in someone or something. The strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on a spiritual apprehension rather than proof. When we talk about doctrine, doctrines, we talk about a belief or a set of belief held and taught by a church 
or a political party or other groups. And then God also had me to talk about the garment of praise um, for the spirit of heaviness. And when we talk about the garment, we talk about like an item of clothing. But God is saying that he needs us to wear praise as, a, as our clothing, our spiritual clothing in order to defeat the spirit of heaviness. And when we talked about the strong man, okay, because we had dissect and had established that the that the spirit of heaviness is a spirit, but the strong man that's attached to that spirit of heaviness is bitterness. Bitterness is anger, disappointment at being mistreated, unfairly, resentment. And when we talk about the strong man, mm -hmm, because we just established that bitterness is the strong man to the spirit of heaviness. Strong man, one who leads or control by force of will or character. So let's dissect strong man, because that was one of the questions that um, was inboxed to me via Facebook about strong man. A strong man is a high ranking principality, demonic spirit that sits on thrones in the spirit realm and rules over the evil spirits that operates in the earth realm. These evil spirits can rule over certain geographical areas of the earth they can operate in churches and be passed down through generations and families. And they can also dwell within an individual. We must always remember that our fight happens in the spirit realm. And we can read that in Ephesians 6 and 12, where it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. So when we understand that our fight is not against flesh and blood, meaning men and women, but our battle is against principalities and powers that, that rules the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness and high places. These are the demonic spirit forces that have been set up thrones in the second heaven to block us from entering into the third heaven where God resides. These forces work to block our prayers, our deliverance, our freedom, and they have come down to earth to enter the hearts and minds of people. And you may say, prophetess, how can they enter the hearts and minds of people? I'm glad you asked. A strong man can gain access when there are doors that have been left open in people's lives. When the enemy has gained entrance to a certain area, a strong man or a ruling spirit will be in control. Lesser evil spirits will follow as manifestations of the strong man. But to get rid of the evil spirits, one must first start and look at the root by dealing with the strong man. In order to be free, from these strong men, deliverance must take place and you must bind the strong man and loose the Holy Spirit. The word of God lets us know that when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him strip him of his powers, and take back their belongings. We have been given authority 
from Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to go into the enemy's camp, bind him up, and take back what God has given us. We have the power to take back our families, children, businesses, churches, communities, governments, as well as lost souls. When we look in the book of Luke, the 10th chapter, at the 17th verse, and it says, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall be by any means hurt you. Never, not, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christ was letting them know, don't rejoice because the spirits are subject to, your, to you through my name, but rejoice because your names have been written in heaven. Why? Because you have taken a stance against these spirits. You have rid yourselves from the spirits that is in you so that you are able to operate in the spirit realm through the authority of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the root of bitterness and unforgiveness, we have to go deep down into the human soul. And usually bitterness and unforgiveness, it is fed by an offense that lies hidden in the soil of the heart. That hidden source of offense will cause these evil forces to resurface in a person's life over and over and over again. So basically, when a person does not deal with unforgiveness, when an offense occurs or happens, they will tap back into the place of unforgiveness. Why? Because they have not dealt with the root of the unforgiveness. The root of the unforgiveness can be anything, anything that may have occurred in a person's life that have taken root in their spirits that they have not dealt with, that they have not prayed to God and said, God, release me from this feeling, release me from this bondage, release me from this spirit in order that I may be free. Unforgiveness is a scene is a scheme of the enemy to keep our eyes on ourselves, thus missing out on that personal relationship with God. Investing time in that relationship can help with each area of your life of unforgiveness. So when the enemy uses unforgiveness in our lives, it stops us from moving forward into the things of God. It is an opening of the door that will allow other spirits to come inside an individual and to manifest through a person's 
character and continence, behavior, every area of a person's lives when it is not properly addressed. And how do we properly address these spirits? We properly address these spirits by first acknowledging that that spirit exists. Second, it's by going into prayer and asking God to help you get past whatever trauma or whatever may have happened in the spans of your lifetime that you are holding on to different areas of your lives that is stopping you from moving forward. Because when we as people hold on to different areas in our lives, not only does it stop our growth, not only does it hinder us, but then you will find yourself on a, of uh, uh, where you will find yourself on a cycle where things will become and it'll reoccur over and over and over again. It will be surfaced over and over and over again until it is properly spiritually addressed through prayer and healing. When we pray and we become hold, we become healed and hold in God, then we as people are able to move forward in the things of God. And we're able to live in the manifestations and the promises of God. God is desiring for all of his children to be free. And who's all? All of mankind. Mm -hmm. All of mankind. Mm -hmm. God desires for each one to be free. Free in our hearts. Free in our minds. And free in our souls. Mm -hmm. And to achieve that, it requires dealing with the strong man that the strong man and the evil spirits that is in each individual lives. Now, I know people like to think they're, that, you know, that they're perfect and there's nothing wrong with them. No, none of us are perfect. All of us are imperfect people, but we are loved by a perfect God. We are loved by a God that sits high and looks low and wants the best for each one of us. He wants us to be healed in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. But in order for that to happen, he has given us the necessary tools to accomplish that. Self-deliverance is so important and it's so vital. I'm gonna say that again. Self-deliverance is so important and it is so vital because each one of us on this earth have something that we need to be delivered from. And we are going to always, always have to bring our flesh underneath the subjection of the Holy Spirit. We're going to always have to come back and, and take a stance of repentance. Repentance means turning away from it and not going back to it. I'm going to say that again. Repentance means turning away from whatever that issue may be and not going back to it. Mm -hmm. Repenting, without, not just with saying, God, I repent, but making sure that we live in a lifestyle of repentance, a posture of repentance, that not only are we saying it, but we are staying true to our word that we are given unto Yahweh. Given unto our daddy, our, our creator, our Lord, our king, our Messiah, our everything. The spirit of heaviness is one of the spirits associated with the 
strong man of bitterness. And there are other spirits that are also associated with it, which is what for unforgiveness is one of them that's associated with the strong man of bitterness. Blaming is also a spirit associated with the strong man of bitterness. Complaining, critical judging, gossiping, irrational condemnation, all of these are associated with the strong man of bitterness. How do you get past bitterness? I'm so glad to ask. To get past the root the spirit of bitterness, or should I say the strong man of bitterness, meaning that you will have to get to the root of the bitterness. Now, the root of the bitterness could be rejection. The root of the bitterness can be, again, of offense. The root of the bitterness could be rape. The root of the bitterness can be abuse. The root of the bitterness can be molestation. The root of the bitterness can be, it can also be financial problems. You have some people who are walking around and because they are going through a financial struggle and they may look at somebody else's life that they deem is not going through a struggle, they can take on the root of bitterness or resentment towards that person. Because they feel that that person have more than them and they have less. And that's what happens when people look at the grass on the other side and think it's much greener. Not understand that we all go through a process. We all go through a stage of financial burden, financial hardship. Um, even the rich man... Um, what wealth and family starts from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it starts from somewhere. Yeah. You know, a person may be born into a wealthy family, but that family was not always wealthy. At some point, when they started out, some great, 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 great generational down had to go through a struggle in order to be able to obtain that success. Mm -hmm. So there was a struggle in there at some point and at some time. Mm -hmm. So when a person look at another person's life, they can become resentment, have resentment towards that person. Whereas they may not like that person and they don't understand why, but they why they don't like the person. And it's not that the person have done anything to them, but it's just the fact that they're looking at what somebody else have comparing to what they may not have so that is another thing that can bring bitterness so there are so many things that where bitterness can come from but it's just a matter of getting down to the root of it how do you get down to the root of it being truthful with oneself to get down to the root of the strong man, to get down to the root of the spirits, one have to first be truthful with themselves about how they are feeling and how they are internalizing things and how they are projecting things on themselves. Because when we as people project things on ourselves in a negative way, then we therefore turn around and project things on other people in a negative way. And if it's in the reverse. When we as people project things on ourselves in a positive way, then we as people would turn around and project things on other people in a positive way. Goes back to the character and the behavior. But first, you have to admit that it exists. To defeat the strong man, you have to want to defeat it. Mm -hmm. Because we already established that we have the power and the authority 
to defeat it. You just have to utilize the power and the authority that Christ has given us. You see, the enemy already knows, which is Satan, that we have the power and authority. He knows this. He already knows this. And he knows that we know it. But his job is to stop us from utilizing and using the power and authority that God has given us. He already knows this. Each one of us is a threat to Satan. I'm going to say that again. Case that someone did not tell you, you are a threat to Satan. And you are a threat to Satan's kingdom. And he knows it. He knows that spiritually, he cannot defeat you. Because we have been given the power and the authority through Jesus Christ. His job is to frustrate you naturally. <laughs> His job is to get you all into your emotions, all into your feelings, all into your head to seclude yourself so that he can work on your emotions. Because if he's working on your emotions and your feelings, then you're not exercising the tools that Christ has given you. Why? Because a lot of times people forget what the word of God says. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. We don't wrestle against that. Take your eyes off of your situation. Take your eyes off of whatever tactics the enemy is utilizing to come up against you. Whether it's through situations, whether it's through men, whether it's through women whether it's through your family, whether it's through your children, whether it's through your finances, and look past the natural to tap into the spirit realm to see and identify the spirit in operation. Mm -hmm. And then take back everything the enemy has stole from you. I don't want to take for granted that everyone have a relationship with God. And if you don't, after hearing this word on today, and you decide that you want to have a relationship with God, and you decide that you will be part of his kingdom, it's simple. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, and you shall be saved. I would love to hear your testimony. I would love for you to reach out to me. You can reach out to me on Gems for Christ timeline on Facebook. You can inbox me or you can inbox me directly, Monique El Rey. Or you can even come down to the physical church building, 51 Top Scott Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11212. We will love for you to come and fellowship and worship with us. Ecclesia Ministries Worship Center, Apostle Meredith Jordan, is my pastor. And again, I am the visionary prophetess Monique Ray of Gems for Christ Women's Ministry. And thank you for joining into Freedom Friday. But we are going to be free, not just on Friday, but we are going after a free life in Christ Jesus to live in the manifestations of his promises. Everyone be blessed and I see you next week. Enjoy your day.